the Cult Worthy Podcast. Join me, Antonio Palacios, each week as I guide you through a never-ending sea of obscure cinema and cult-worthy gems that deserve a rediscovery. Find me on all listening platforms and at thecultworthy.com. The Cult Worthy Podcast. Join us. Welcome to Tea Smack, home of the Tea Smack. May I take your order? Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Talking Smack, where we talk superheroes, movies, animation, comics, and whatever the hell Madam Web was. Yeah. I am your host, Josh Scar, and <laughs> joining me, as always, is my co-host, Alex. Alex, how you doing? I would ask you to please direct all your questions to my lawyer. She is sitting next to me. Hello, I'm the lawyer. <laughs> Why don't you come over here and give me a couple bucks of roonies? I'll tell you what you think. I think you went to the Donald Trump School of Lawyers. I was going to say, your lawyer, is, it, she, she needs a lozenge. I'm just saying. <laughs> a lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> You're also hearing the dulcet tones of the one, the only, Beppo. Beppo, welcome back. How you doing? Hey, yo! Uh, it's good to be back, especially with such a <laughs> miraculous, I, I mean, a movie of the century. Eat your heart out, Avengers Part 1 and 2. <laughs> This is what we've all been waiting for. Madame Webb. It is the movie of February at the very least, I think. But yes, Madame Webb has come and gone uh, for opening weekend, which I should have looked up opening weekend numbers. Alex, you're good at that. Find those things real quick. 26 million over six days, 52 million worldwide, <laughs> beaten by Bob Marley's One Love, which got 52 and 81 worldwide. God damn. Can't blame them. I mean, the trailer looked good to me, but apparently the reviews are middling at best. So um, when you're done listening to us rant and rave about this, definitely go check out <laughs> Justin Henson. I believe he's got a he's doing Madam Web and One Love. So double shout out to Justin. And since we did the Antonio promo, don't forget that Antonio and Justin are teaming up for their own podcast between two balconies. It is fantastic. Give it a listen. And we are going to dive into Madam Web here. We're going full spoilers because goddamn, this movie does not need any more box office money than it already has. And I almost feel guilty. Not that I sent you guys to the theater to go see this movie. This is going to be fun. But I almost feel guilty for giving my money to Sony and almost just almost justifying <laughs> the production value of this movie. But I do feel bad for the cast yeah. because Dakota Johnson I, is she a good actress? She is. Um, okay. Uh, no, she is. She is. It. If you want to see a really fantastic movie where Dakota Johnson is a star, the remake of Suspiria. It's on Amazon Prime. Genuinely one of my top 10 favorite movies. And she is a fantastic part of that. I didn't think much of Dakota Johnson until I saw that movie. And now I, I truly, I really like her. And the thing I like about her is her normal tone is exactly how the tone is in this movie of, I don't give a shit. I'm tired. I don't <laughs> give a shit. That's how she is like IRL. I've seen her in interviews and she's pretty much just like, I don't care. And that's why I knew that even though I was like, unironically excited when the trailer dropped because of two reasons dakota johnson and i just wanted to see julia carpenter on the big screen which we'll get into that yeah uh, i i could tell from the trailer that i was like oh she's giving her i don't give a shit energy and i'm here <laughs> for this oh she's derailed this movie from the get-go she's been doing so many promotional mm -hmm. interviews where she's just like oh it was chaos it was nonsense like i i didn't even know if this movie was going to be any good she clearly is like pissed off about having gotten swindled into this movie because she thought she yeah. was doing an mcu movie she told a story about how she ran into Elizabeth Olsen and mm -hmm. she's like, I'm in a Marvel movie. I'm in a Marvel movie. How do you, what should I do? And Elizabeth Olsen is like, who are you playing? What are you doing? Cause if we get to work together, amazing. And she's like, Oh, it's this, this thing going on with Spider-Man. And Elizabeth Olsen was just kind of like, Oh shit, girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was I, the guys that I have some notes also shared uh, a video where some, some prick of a, 
a podcaster or someone was like trying to do a gotcha moment with Dakota Johnson, where he he mentions the the line from the trailer that went viral, where it's like, yeah, this, the most expositional line ever written. Yeah, like <laughs> she, he he murdered my mother in the Amazon, and my mother was in the Amazon mur- uh, studying spiders, and he murdered her there. Yeah, it was yeah, that, like that that line, and she's just like, why do people care about that line? And he goes like, well, out of context, it's a really weird line. It's just like a, a very awkward line. And she just made it so awkward. And I'm like, fuck yes. You you make that dude regret asking you a stupid ass question. Yeah. <laughs> I remember because Josh and I were having a conversation how I, I posted on my Twitter. I was like, am I the only person in the world who's kind of looking forward to this <laughs> and i was like don't get me wrong it's going to be dog shit it is a sony marvel movie it's going to be dog shit i'm already getting some vibes here that i'm here for and uh it did not disappoint yeah this is this is the definition of a sony marvel movie but alex you've been you've been weirdly quiet for the last like five minutes you're not it's- supposed to say anything without my orders <laughs> All right, I've cleared it with the with the uh, executives. Go ahead, Alex. Ma'am, you can't smoke in here. I'm sorry. The, the Tabaxi's lungs cannot handle this. Who says I'm a smoker? <laughs> the cigarette in your hand. <laughs> it's just for dramatic effect. <laughs> it's vaping now, you scrub. Get with the times. <laughs> Uh, my lawyer will go unnamed, much like Mary Parker's child. <laughs> her, yeah. her, na- her name rhymes with Molina Jabba. Uh, oh, I thought the baby's name was Balloon Pop. <laughs> <laughs> but since my lawyer has cleared it as an employee of yours, I am passing along my costs. So that's nine forty eight for the ticket. Uh, then we also have the sixty five cents, which is standard for mileage travel, and it's a twenty. 20- <laughs> That is a uh, twenty miles round trip to this theater, so that's another that's thirteen dollars even. Oh, what are you <laughs> driving twenty miles to go to a theater for? I went to the one that had the showing that was good for me. Oh yeah. Yep. All right, and then we got uh, a large icy that's seven twenty five. We got the uh, got to get the chicken nuggets, so that's another twenty five thirty eight. Getting chicken nuggets? What the fuck is this guy? Chicken in a theater is the grossest fucking smell. Yeah. I am a cat. I do not have a preference. All right. And then we got the one drink I had. So, you know, the alcoholic drink that's tied in. So that's another 1348. And then pain and suffering that times the total (laughs) by about 1500. You owe me $561,730. Check will be in the mail next week. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You take Monopoly money, right? (laughs) Of course. Uh, this is a question that's been bothering me this entire time. The bad guy a few times mentions Mr. I have a crackly voice and a yes. weird vague accent. <laughs> They're going to take away everything I've built. What, what did he build? What did he build? <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm aware, he built a one bedroom loft. Yeah. Cool he built a terrarium. <laughs> yeah. He built a terrarium for the tiny, massive spider. All right, the tiny CGI spider. That is some of the worst. The tiny CGI, CGI I've ever spider seen. that is the size of my hand. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, I I absolutely love. They've already established through the about nine minute prologue sequence of. How many Spider-Man references can you get? Because you have, Mm -hmm. she's doing the, like, she has the same Nikon camera that apparently uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man has. That web shaping is very similar to the one he zoomed up on. They have the kind of creepy Mary, stalking Mary Jane trying to get her photo kind of thing going. You have weird Twilight spider people and they're very <laughs> this the cgi oh my God. twilight was so <laughs> much you. better than Thank the you. spider people running in that yeah. See, oh my lord i was at the theater with stacy and i leaned over to her i'm like you remember how it looked when in twilight when edward picked up bella and ran through the forest she's like oh my god and i just snapped my fingers and pointed at the screen <laughs> i have a few things to say about the opening but uh, i'm gonna let you finish yeah. alex mostly my thing is do we need to establish he's a terrible person because he already shot a pregnant woman and left her for dead? Right. And then his his reintroduction is the bad guy checkmark list. 
bad guy rich check it off likes opera checks it off has casual sex check it off uses casual sex to get a thing from someone important <laughs> exactly murders sexual partner check <laughs> steals technology that shouldn't exist in the year of 2003 <laughs> hey hey 911 created a lot of problems mm -hmm. including facial yeah. recognition yeah mm -hmm. um before we move on real quick though before it slips my mind alex thank you for pointing out the nikon thing because <laughs> i thought that was like the weirdest brand placement product placement for a sony movie ever i was mm -hmm. like why is Sony showing me this Nikon camera so effectively right now? What the hell is happening? That because sense, yeah. if you go back to Amazing Spider-Man 2, everything is a Sony camera, even Peter Parker's old flash film camera, everything. And so I was like, why the hell are they showing me this Nikon camera that should be a Sony and of some kind? So now I know. Easter I egg. didn't even notice. Yeah, I, I need to say about the, the opening. The acting from every single person in the flashback, <laughs> it and I'm not saying this to be like, oh, I'm making a joke, but the line delivery is exactly how it sounds in like a high school or college stage play. You know, like when you're watching a movie versus like movie acting versus stage acting, there's always differences in line delivery, the way that you kind of have to say lines in a certain scenes you wouldn't do the same type of acting on stage as you would in a movie because you have to you can't have those subtleties they have to be more exaggerated even when it's for a lesser feeling yeah it's one of the things Holy. i love about like old movies like the ten commandments like you, you get the like stage acting because they haven't figured out how to act for a film yet yeah imagine delivering all of your lines with the board version of like stage acting without any of the inflections to give emotion it wasn't just emotionalist dialogue it was like it was high school level it was so bad and i just sat there and i'm like this is so fucking awful and this is supposed to be our main villain and he sounds and then by the by like the the first end of the and that was act, fixed sorry sorry to interrupt you again beppo but like that was fixed in post in, in it was 80 hit 98% of his lines are ADR. Were ADR. Yes, they were. And I want to point out on that fact is how many times I was watching this movie, I could see like from the 180, you know, the 180 shot for like film. One over some a camera over one person's shoulder showing the person in front of them, and then literally 180. So that's that's how you have a conversation, a back and forth. I cannot tell you how many times there was like a 180, and I could see the person's jaw moving up and down and there was no sound coming out or uh adr like recording or whatever and they technically they clearly weren't moving their mouth my god there was so much post there's there's one scene in particular that still sticks in my head it, it, it might be in my head forever it might be one of the the new rent free moments in my brain but uh there's one shot that they clearly cgi'd shadows over the guy so like you, you get the like darth vader emperor thing where the the eyes are the only thing that's lit up and he is his lines are 80 yard as he's sitting on these stairs in his apartment and i think it's the like do you know what i have built moment where he's talking to the girl from the flight attendant his his mouth is not lining up with what is coming out of his mouth yes it's so bad. I don't even know where to, to begin with this. It, it sounded like completely different audio quality. Like this was recording for a video game, but the audio source keeps changing every scene. We got to get into some of this stuff a little more explicitly. My expectation going into this was it was going to be a, a bad movie. Like I, there's no way they released one trailer for this movie and every other bit of marketing material was like, leaked virally like the first time we saw the madam web costume which isn't in the damn movie was on a, like a capri sun package or an ocean spray sorry and everything that revealed anything about this movie was through promotional materials that was uh -huh. not of in a visual medium like someone's like hey bananas with the picture of jessica carpenter like, or julia carpenter like let's take a picture of the banana with her on it and but but the the first trailer i was like okay this is going to be happy death day and she's trying to save the future spider women i would have loved a happy death day she's continuing to try and solve these murders and get these girls through the day like these spider women 
and it's like birds of prey from the the late 90s or whatever and no <laughs> apparently even that is too much of a, a pitch for sony to to make something unique to kind of take this classic should we start from the beginning of the movie and make our way through the end as much we as can... we can remember <laughs> not like literally the entire length of the movie but like so we started with the opening scene right pretty pretty painful the the weird spider spider tribe people looked so weird actually i really liked that i thought Th their skin was red and i felt like they were raw the weird not spider-man costume where they're wearing the webbing of eventually what ezekiel would be wearing in his costume like what, what yeah, I like that. is that where you tie somebody up in rope and it's BDSM. all around their body no not bdsm it's an actual type of body rope i actually like the costume design that, that design of them it was tribal but they were really leaning into this the, the spider motif i liked that i didn't like anything else surrounding it including the very caucasian man as their leader yes and then they yeah. put her you know they in the peruvian amazon <laughs> yes specifically not the amazon the peruvian amazon ah yes kinbaku or shibari that's a uh, rope bondage there we go for y'all you <laughs> kiddos listening in the audience thank you Beppo. <laughs> you're welcome remember consent is key but it's also comfortable if you wear it during the day so <laughs> <laughs> yeah they put the dying mother in the thor ragnarok pool of summoning age of ultron Sorry, yes, the Age of Ultra. And she passes away, but because she got bit by the spider, it gave just enough oomph for her to be able to deliver the child, who, of course, is going to be infused with spider powers. And does she go to live with her deadbeat dad, who treats her like shit? For the No, apparently she just immediately goes into the foster system. Where the what? fuck is her dad? Is she an immaculate conception child? Like, does the movie cover this? Well, no, if it was a dead... Honestly, though, that's not super uncommon. If there's a deadbeat dad wants nothing to do with it... They'll, they'd rather put her in a foster system than. But with the a movie bad doesn't parent. care to talk about the dad, which like. Yeah, well, because he doesn't matter. It's like real life. If there's a deadbeat dad who is never in the, <laughs> then it doesn't matter. He's not around. It explains her family issues better. My thing about it is that how does a a, a tribal people go to America and enter a a random white girl into the foster system? <laughs> there are questions that would be asked. They just shipped her in a crate to the nearest fire department. They bought a plane ticket for a newborn baby and put that shit on a plane. <laughs> or they, they got a bus and they had a wet nurse take her all the way to the border. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this child that was not out. born in America is American. I promise you, her mother, there's no father. Uh, there was no father. It was the midichlorians, some bullshit. Mm -hmm. Just... Just trust us we're spider people you can trust us we're good people except the one guy that you'll meet 30 years in the future yeah so my next question would be did they show up at the border with the newspaper clipping saying oh yeah your mom was sh your listen she is this this dead woman her child please make sure she gets this suitcase yeah. with appropriate with appropriate newspapers describing right, her right. murder in, in context <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right so let's see. So that's the opening. And then we go into seeing Miss Miss Cassie Webb. Uh, so the movie takes place in 2003. Supposedly. New York, of course. <laughs> and Cassie, all grown up in her 30s, she is a uh, ambulance first responder, paramedic, paramedic. And she acts like a complete normal human being. So she drives like an asshole, flips people off who are walking in the street. No, she didn't flip them off. I'm the, just that was the Maddie. Flip. Yeah, Maddie flipped her off. Here's my thing. Here's my thing about that scene. Maddie flips her off and she goes, ah, who flips up an ambulance? Jesus Christ, kids these days. But the whole reason is she's driving as fast as she can to save the life of a dying human. But she takes the time to just keep the ambulance <laughs> stopped to make that comment. And as she's rolling her eyes going, kids these days, she just puts it back in drive and then slowly starts speeding up. My thing is, Go! Go! Do you know how easy it is as a New Yorker to curse under your breath talking about how shitty kids are these days while also driving like 65 miles an hour? You can do this. Uh, that was my biggest gripe with the scene. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love seeing uh, Adam Scott as uh, Ben Parker. I love that. I love that casting. If it was in a better movie, that would have been amazing. Yeah. I was literally the only person in the theater on Friday when I saw Lucky. this. I wish we were alone. I was live tweeting to Josh and Justin, and I actually wrote, they dragged Adam Scott into this shit. 
<laughs> and yeah. I said it gets worse because there's a yeah. there's a Robert's family member coming up. Yeah. And then finally they said, "You're my best friend, Ben Parker." I'm like, "Oh no!" And that was that was another <laughs> scene where they're they're having lunch while she's sitting on a desk, and he's eat, sitting behind the table. Where again, they're just acting like very normal human beings. Like this movie, someone I forget who someone like tweeted out or said something to the effect of like, I think was it Dakota Johnson, Alex? I think I sent you that tweet where they said like, "Oh, this is a perfect movie for your boyfriend." Yes. And I'm like, maybe if AI wrote this, because AI does like, there's no human interaction in this movie that makes fucking sense. To continue to establish that Cassie's a horrible human being. And also she's a 30 year old woman. She should go by Cass or Cassandra, not Cassie. No, I, excuse me. I'm a 30 year old woman and I still go by my IRL nickname spelled with two eyes. That's <laughs> no, it, that's, that's uh, ageist. I'm- that's ageist uh, yeah, I'm, and sexist. Yeah, I'm going to say she, she uh, no, uh, not even sexist. It's You could be a grown ass woman and still go by your cute nickname. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I, I know you're I not being sexist. I'm throwing out Cass, ists. <laughs> I, no, Cass I like is so Cassie. much Cassie is too young of a name. N- no, it needs it's to be not. she needs to be Cass. Cass or it just is Cassandra. Not. As a woman in her 30s, Cassie is not too young for a grown ass. You're ageless, adult. Beppo. You're 28 forever. Oh, you're too kind to me. <laughs> so do we have a madison situation here where it's beppo with two eyes but not where you think <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah totally a line that will live rent free in my head that is purely this is purely to establish that cassie cassandra cass webb <laughs> thank you <laughs> is not a human being at all they have three. They have a scene in the ambulance. They have the eating scene, but before that is a scene where they've dropped off the body. Yes, and you have people there, and this little child walks up and hands her a "thank you for saving my family member" my note. Mom, yeah, and she's like, "What do I do?" And he's like, "You fold it up, put it in your pocket, and you deposit it later. You act like a human." I actually think he says he acts. You act like a human. And as they're walking away, she says, "How do I fold this? It's like cardboard." I'm like, yeah, I can't even (laughs) fold it. It's like cardboard. It is cardstock that you just get in any child's craft room that can be cut with safety scissors. Yeah. Are you that weak? Is that why you're the driver? No, no. I think think it's a, here's the thing. I can absolutely see what they were trying to do and where they succeeded and where they mostly failed. Like, she was just being snarky. He's like, how am I supposed to fold it? It's too thick. Like, she's just being a bitch. Here's the thing, though. I will say, and Stacy disagreed with me, but one of, uh, the, one of the only scenes I liked in the movie was her and Ben just eating Chinese food, chit-chatting. I just liked the interaction. I think for the most part, that scene did work, yes. The dialogue, not the best, not the worst. I did. I just enjoyed that interaction. I felt like those two actually enjoyed being in a room together, both they as had chemistry, actors yes. and as the characters. And it almost kind of made me sad that Ben found May because you can tell that Cass would rather, you know, Cass has a thing for Ben. Because of the name drop or lack thereof for May, which I'm going to get into something else later when we talk about Mary Parker. If Ben had been dating May long enough that it's that serious. She would know about it. The way they establish their relationship earlier in the scene, they're best friends. They yeah. ride in the ambulance all day. They would know this, but this yeah. is a conversation that they need to set up some weird awkwardness to continue to make her not at, behave like a human that right. he needs to be like, oh, and by the way, I've been dating this girl and it's very serious. We went on one date and you didn't know about it till just now. Right, right. Like, I, I, I remember... Uh, cause again, it goes on the lines of like, you're not human. I will say the movie got one chuckle out of me that wasn't like laughing at it. And that's when he's just like, he's teasing her about like, you know, you know, why aren't you a good person or why weren't you a good kid? And she's like, what are you talking about? I was the best foster kid that people could possibly have. I, I even went, I peed outside on my own and everything. Like, I, I can't remember how it was worded, but yep. it was like that. And the both the line delivery, how she said it, it again, I like Dakota Jans- Johnson. She has a very uh, dry, like, doesn't give a shit delivery on a lot of things. So I did, I that was one of the few 
moments in the movie where I genuinely got a smile and like a little like exhale through my nose laugh. Uh, then after that, we have the scene where uh, they get called out to a car accident. The car is upside down with a gentleman inside and they have to rescue him. They successfully pull him out, but lo and behold, she gets trapped in the car as it goes over the bridge and smashes into the water. Dun, dun, dun. And dun, powers dun. awaken. Powers, powers awaken. awaken. Vague time travel powers awaken. Uh, also, here's my thing is I could get it if it was like an inert power, but why didn't she have anything going on from the time of literally being born up until her being like 34 years old? Like, th- she's not a mutant, so it's not mm-hmm. like it's a mutant ability that just came out of nowhere. Or is she? Oh, well, in the comics, she is. Madam Web is a- technically a mutant. But in this, she's just a baby whose mom was bitten by a spider. On, oh, oh, that's the other thing, going back way to the beginning. Now, I get it. Anything that goes into the mother's system also goes into the baby's system. But that spider bit her like three seconds before that kid shot out of her vagoo. <laughs> How much of the venom would have actually gotten into the baby? Not only that, but that would have fucked with the DNA. Because, I mean, there are babies who are born with moms who just like shot up heroin. And you give them a couple, like, you, you give them like a couple weeks of, of you know, <laughs> getting it out of their system and they're good. Detox. So, yeah, some detox. Alex, are you okay? <laughs> I was just like, okay, so thus far, this episode we've had. Can we file a lawsuit against Sony for making us talk about heroin babies? Crack yes. babies. <laughs> Crack babies, heroin babies. Um, the proper terminology for self bondage. <laughs> yes, yes. My lawyer is still sitting off to the side, uh, downing a lawsuit. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And, and Beppo's New York accent, and finding out that Beppo is actually spelled with two eyes. <laughs> yes. I'll let you figure it out. We- um i do want to go back to the the hospital real quick before um the kid that gives her the the cardboard the thank you card (laughs) is also thank you for saving my mother is also the stepbrother for uh julia carpenter whatever they call her in this movie because i know they Mm. changed her last name oh no not necessarily so her her name is julia carpenter her original name is cornwell but okay. that's actually her name before she was married in the comics. That's her uh, name. Gotcha. Okay. Is Cornwell. Okay. But she's the one one of the three misfit girls in this movie that I have the biggest problem with her backstory because the idea is her dad doesn't love her mm-hmm. or at least her dad doesn't love her enough to allow her to be part of their his new family in New York and her mom is an absentee mom living out in the West Coast. Uh, well, I'll get into it a little bit more when we talk more about the backstories for Maddie, Julia, and Anya, which Anya was Dora the Explorer, by the way. No fucking way. Yeah, she was Dora the Explorer and Dora in the Lost City or whatever that one was called. Oh, oh, the movie. I thought you meant like she was the voice of Dora. No, she was up. live action Dora. Okay. Which that movie is actually pretty fun. I recommend yeah, it to heard. anyone that's interested in just enjoying life for half an hour. Unlike this movie, or I should mm-hmm. say yeah. 90 minutes. Yeah, it's cute. Danny Trejo's in it. Yeah, he has the voice of uh, Boots. Julia's backstory with where we get to at the end. Why is her dad at the very least not like, why is our daughter never home? Why is my daughter never home? Like, where the hell is she? <laughs> it's like, do I, do I even care that she exists? Like, parents are not this bad of people, really, in some senses. Mm. I don't know. I just maybe I'm too good of a parent. I don't know. No, unfortunately, I I don't see that as completely unrealistic. I've seen some stuff, uh, especially when you read a lot of like, I know it sounds cheesy, but when you read a lot of like true crime or even just get to mm. know people more and you read about like real life. Uh, I watch a lot of like courtroom or body cam footage of people like usually either drunk drivers or neglectful parents. And yeah, unfortunately, that's not too unbelievable. In, in those scenarios, yeah, but like in this situation where it's just like the dad's like, eh, "You're from my previous marriage. I don't really want you involved in this marriage." No, that's you're that's only... yeah, no, that's a thing. I still just feel like her just being off, handed off to Cassandra, Madam Web, at the end of the movie is just so weird. Well, to be fair, I don't think that they was like literally adopted. I think she just no. kind of takes them under their wing. But uh, no, unfortunately, I can actually believe that aspect of the movie for Julia is uh, a lot of, I mean, 
Yeah, that, I mean, look at something like Chris Watts, you know, he wanted to start his own brand new family and didn't want anybody else involved with them. The only difference here is that uh, Julia's, you know, Sydney this Sweeney. didn't turn... <laughs> This didn't she, turn she's all that. <laughs> she's all that. She's uh, all that. She's but, got glasses and a plaid shirt. Like, oh, yeah. Hideous. Mm-hmm. Aw, she's a cutie patootie. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, the actress who played her, she's really pretty. And I thought she looked gorgeous throughout the whole movie. That's a girl thing, though. Like, I'm not even, that's not even a compliment on the, that's a compliment on the makeup artist. This movie treats its younger actors like a very early 2000s movie because like Sydney Sweeney yes is undeniably and arguably very beautiful and the movie is like let's put some glasses on her and straighten her hair and she will be hideous until we put her we give her a bare midriff and we take off her glasses because there's literally a line where they do the they they dance on the the restaurant tables where mm-hmm. Maddie like ties up her shirt and takes off her glasses and I think Either yep. someone says, you look so hot, or she says, I feel so hot. No, no. She says, uh, you look cuter this way. Yep. They, and they, pulls her okay. which, which, if they're they're high school girls trying to flirt with high school boys, then, yeah, that's going to be a thing. She showed her mis- nib drift because, you know, what do boys like? They want to see your belly. They take off your glasses. You look like a nerd. Like that, <laughs> it, I don't think it was because here's the thing. I don't think that was the intention at all. And they were jocks too, so yeah, the the glasses kind of are a deal breaker for those early 2000s jocks. Speaking of, so the scene where they are dancing on top of the table and everything, and the guys are just like, oh yeah, and they're just dancing back and forth. I'm like, no, bullshit. They would be staring up Julia's skirt the Mm -hmm. insta second she stood up, and her skirt would be flying around everywhere, because that skirt's short as fuck. I'm just saying, girl, look at those legs. She definitely does not go to a private school with that skirt. (laughs) <laughs> no oh, way. Well, let's see. Let's talk about... So the part where she awakens her inert powers. Like the whole scene of her uh, underwater and kind of having that out-of-body experience with like all the webbing and actually showing scenes and dialogue and pieces of throughout the whole movie. I think that was a clever idea. Yeah. That was a really clever idea, especially since I started re-watching the movie on a 100% totally legitimate Twitch stream of the movie <laughs> that I paid oh, yeah, money for totally. Oh, yeah. Um, and I saw that scene again, and then I realized that literally every piece of dialogue, every scene or thing that is shown is from this movie. I You don't catch that beforehand because you don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen, you know, first, first watch through. And I'm like, okay, I see what they were going for. I, I kind of like this idea. I kind of like it. From there, the most annoying part of the movie begins. And it's the time repeats, the loops. It's not actually time. It's her seeing the future and then snapping back to reality and actually living it. But the movie doesn't translate that very well. Oh, it's translated fucking horribly. It feels very much like a happy death day or edge of tomorrow kind of scenario where a happy like, death day still did it better. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it, like Happy Death Day is a actually surprisingly fun movie. It is. Um, the sequel Death Day even Two better. was even better. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'll wait till we talk about the subway scene because I I do have something to point out about the whole like time flashback there, or well not time flashback. What would you call it? Like future sight. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, I mean let's let's just get into it because the only other thing that notably happens is again Cassie does not act like a human at the the baby shower. This pissed me off. Baby showers are awkward and, and stuff like yeah. that. But you're on a couch. Your stuff is being passed around. You do the church thing. You pretend to put money in the basket and you do not submit a blank piece of paper. And then talk, yeah. and then who put in blank piece of paper? Oh, me. And they're playing the, the name guessing game. Like oh. you don't have to have had a family to understand the concept of that game. Yeah. A- yeah, a- and they're like, "Oh, you don't have one like happy memory of your mother? No, she 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 was shot while carrying me. Blah 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 blah. She died, died in childbirth, died in labor. Yeah, labor, all that crap. And it's like, oh, probably won't happen to you. You don't. Are you not a person? That's the part. This is like, yeah. it's like the seventh or eighth scene in a row where it's like they they really wanted to drive home the idea that her mom. She knows that her mom died in childbirth, and now she's engaging with a pregnant person. They could have written that scene any other way and yeah. it could have slipped out where she's just like oh my god um 
And then she like fumbles around with the, like that, but it probably won't happen to you. But no, no, this movie just tries to play her off like this distant, cold, unfeeling, not human. Yeah. And she's just like, I don't, I don't engage with people. Yeah. It just comes off as, as malicious. Yeah. That's the thing. Like she did it on purpose. Yeah. To unload on people. Yeah. And then eventually Ezekiel is like talking to his hacker. Well, yelling at his hacker employee. Like, Hey, listen, find these people. They get the NSA, you know, post nine 11 database searchy stuff. And spider powers apparently give you very good digital art abilities because mm-hmm. he <laughs> he he is able to recreate these spider women from his visions or dreams mm-hmm. and they remove the masks and they just fill in the blanks apparently and they make get one-to-one matches no uh, no, no they did they did say de-age them 10 years too <laughs> yeah okay uh, so who would have thought that ai art was so good even back then uh, okay so legitimate <laughs> question though maybe i missed something how did they upload his images up? Like, did he have like a thing where like it could upload? Like, was he wearing a headset that was taking photographs of his dreams and they used those mental images and upload them to the computer? Like, how did how did they get the three faces of the, the women into the computer database? Was well, it that like I know you're you're eternally 28, so in, <sighs> in 2003, oh um God. when you were very tiny. There was a thing called a scanner. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but are we talking like a brain scanner? Because how would he get their images if they're just in his dreams? That's what he built. He built that technology. <laughs> Apparently. And take it all from him. Apparently. He never brought it up, but this is definitely what he's been working for for all. Of- I feel like he could just plug anything in there. It's like, this is my life's work. What? This. Oh. 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 And it just this changes. This terrarium. This terrarium is my life's work. <laughs> this this brain scan technology is my life's work. This sweet goatee is my life's work. It, and by the way, it's something I realized in the moment, and then I had to confirm when I got home. The the person he seduces at the opera, the NSA lady, and then kills, that is Jill Hennessy. That is one of my teenage crushes from Crossing Jordan, Dr. Jordan. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, she's in a movie again. Oh, she's in like a scene and a half to get. Ki- oh, now I'm sad. <laughs> well, you got to see her what she looks like post coitus. <laughs> PG-13 coitus. So, yeah, the train. Beppo, please rage about the train. <laughs> All right, so. I. I. <laughs> She opens her Sorry, rage cookies. I'm like, I'm like pacing around my room right now. Hold on. <laughs> rage cookies. Rage. Rage. There we go. Rage. rage. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I said that without opening my mouth. That's so cool. <laughs> so uh, my biggest complaint about the subway scene is they have to do the the repeat of time yeah. three to four fucking times because well, it starts it yeah well it's like the one part where she's sitting there and the guy has a PSP which is literally released in 2004 not 2003 but who am I to say so and then the lady with the the fucking it repeats like four times because it does it for each time the uh, new girl gets on the train. And I know what they were trying to do, obviously, like show them one by one. I think that's a big problem with this movie is I feel like throughout most of it, I can go, I see what they were trying to do, but I feel like that's, that's this movie, but it's so poorly edited and it's jarring and not in like a good, like, Oh, you know how she feels jarring. I mean, like in a, I'm getting nauseated. And this is why I don't go to fucking movie theaters anymore. I hate the sound mixing in theaters. It's because every time that that, uh, the the subway train would like whoosh by or squeak its tires, it was so loud that like it would shake the inside of my ears and my brain. So that's just a me thing. But like it was just really annoying. They could have done that with so much less time and so many less edits. Just edit it down. Edit it down. That goes with translating her powers too or at least yeah. translating into the early stages of her powers because they they didn't yeah. know how to make she sees the future interesting yeah and so they went with let's just have her glimpse the future and then whoosh back 
but we're never going to make it seem like she's whooshing back. Is we're just going to make it seem like she's resetting. The- this this movie had more jump scares than any horror movie of the last like three years. So, so my thing about it is that in a good time travel movie, what they do is they have a singular cue that you're restarting. Uh, with Groundhog Day, it is the music to the alarm. With yep. live, uh, live, die, repeat, edge of tomorrow, whatever you want to call it, it's Bill Paxson screaming, "Wake up, maggot!" at him with a little kick to the thing. With Happy yeah. Death Day, it's it's your birthday in the alarm thing. This yep. they do the cue with gunshots that are sorry balloon pops <laughs> at a baby pops. shower. That I Keith love has, balloon yeah, pop Parker. Yeah. He's gonna be so cute. <laughs> and then the the train and the obnoxious and you're right, it's painful of just a screaming train sound over and yes, over. Yes, yes. It it is. It's so it's just it's really obnoxious. And I think one of the major things I noticed throughout the movie that was my big one of my big gripes is okay, this scene could be edited down. The scene could be edited down. The the scenes inside of the cab when she's driving the girls around first when they they survive the first encounter with Ezekiel after the subway, but especially the one where she picks him up from the diner and it's, you should say sorry. And it's just long, awkward silences, not like a reflect on this. It's like, guys, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. It's Mm -hmm. like standing, did you guys ever watch Mr. Bean growing up? It's like the one where he's in the hotel and that old lady in the walker is going down the stairs and he just can't get past her. So he literally dangles his body off of the staircase and (laughs) wiggles down. And then he still, he gets in front of her. And as he's walking down, there's an old man going down the stairs at a snail's pace. That's what this movie felt like to me. Felt like getting stuck between two old people going downstairs. But Mm -hmm. yeah, the subway scene. Now, mind you, I am stealing some of this criticism from Stacy. Because we actually had kind of differing views on this. And she did give me credit. She's like, to be fair, you know about these characters. I don't know anything about these characters. And I couldn't follow a damn thing. I'm like, well, uh, give me some credit here. Because none of these characters are anything like their comic book counterpart. Literally nothing. The, the only thing I really know about Madam Web right now is that Cassandra is the current ca- Madam. Yes. Cassandra is the current Madam Web. Uh, no, not she Cassandra. Got- Julia. Julia, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, Cassandra died in uh, a Spider-Man storyline that we were going to try and cover for the podcast, but then we found out that that storyline was 20 issues long, and we were like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, Julia is the current Madam Web. She got the the mantle passed down to her, um, yeah. and that's that's pretty much the length of my knowledge. I know Anya has a minor role in um, Spider-Verse, the 2014 edition of the comic. And then mm-hmm. uh, I've never ex- I, I don't think I've ever experienced Maddie in a comic, so I, I have no. I did a long time ago and she's fine. But uh, yeah, sorry, that that was a side tangent. I feel like this whole thing is going to be like talking about the movie, same complaint and then side tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Lather, rinse, repeat. One thing we skipped because I'm going to come back to this later is when we were leaving the uh, the subway, uh, Cassandra steals a taxi. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, that is... don't even get me started. They're, that is their mode of transportation and For one the the that is some of the worst <laughs> acting driving i have seen in a long time <laughs> she's driving in new york or she's supposed to be driving in new york and she is constantly looking in the back seat talking to these kids yeah and, while driving and like the the background is consistently moving and i'm like what what era of new york in 2003 has open roads like this and also, keep your eyes on the damn road. <laughs> I know you're stressed and you're trying to get answers from these kids, but look forward. Yeah. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but you're giving me anxiety, even as a viewer, when you're just sitting there constantly turning your head for extended periods of time, like you're in the Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, uh, I have a list of complaints. Oh, please go. In no particular order. Let's just go through them because maybe we'll we'll tangent into more story things. But yeah, let's just talk about the complaints here. <laughs> Okay, this is a cab company because you didn't have like independent cabs, really, especially back in 2003. This is before Uber, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't have Uber. We don't have like solo people. You're you're part of a cab association, a cab company. Mm -hmm. Cab companies have trackers in their cars because that's their property. They've been in there since I'm pretty sure the 90s or if not earlier, but at least the 90s. We'll go as early as early as the 90s. How she rips the license plates off. She gets into several crashes where it's dented and everything like that. 
Mm -hmm. How does a car sit in Ben Parker's driveway for three fucking weeks and (laughs) they don't find it? They should have been able to track it that same day and pinpointed it to being the girl who quote unquote kidnapped three other girls. It makes no sense. The girls show up on the train. Dakota Johnson not kidnaps him. We get our first view of not Spider-Man. Oh, God. Who Boxy Spider-Man. <laughs> she gets them into she gets them to they don't really even know each. The three girls don't really even know each other. She gets them to go with her by saying, you're being, going to be attacked. Yes, then shows up, apparently, a uh, night spider or spider monkey which from <laughs> spider monkey? from far from home. <laughs> oh, my God. Or, or burst design of Venom suit. And uh. gets them. She gets them in a taxi. And then she's like, and there's already an APB out on her specifically to get her. She does not, and she doesn't want the kids. So then she somehow gets out of New York takes him, I'm assuming, to New Jersey, and then dumps him in the woods. So that she says, I'll be back in three hours, to then go back to New York, rip off the license plates, do some stuff, reminisce through her mom's book, come back, and the girls have figured out how to hike through the woods after bonding. And yes, they have the three most horrible backstories of, of people. One is, I am math girl. My, whose my, dad- my parents are in China, and I live yeah. at home with the maids. Mm-hmm. My dad's deported because I'm a mm-hmm. Latina character. Therefore, my dad must be an illegal alien. Mm-hmm. And we have Sydney Sweeney, who is my mom's a junkie in California. And my dad doesn't want me. Well, no, her mom ended up not being a junkie. She ended up being put into a psych ward after the. Oh, that's right. Split up. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. She took the divorce poorly. Yeah. I, yeah. My brain just decided that yeah. it that equaled junkie. But I apologize. No, your brain is turning into a junkie brain because of this movie. Yeah, that's fair. I- and they bond. I, I just I want to know who was giving direction to they them. They bond over Britney Spears. Hell, which like is... every young girl does. <laughs> Don't even at me, bro. Don't even I'm, at me. I'm not. If I'm right there not, with you. If you were not a teenage girl. In the 2000s, don't even at me with this. That is 100% accurate how all girls bonded was Britney Spears. Oh, please. The, the girl with the skateboard would have been a Christina fan. Now, nah, she would have been like... Or, Av- or Avril Lavigne. She would have posed <laughs> yeah. as a Christina fan, but she would have been, she would have been like, yeah, Britney's my bitch. Yeah. I'm closet Britney. <laughs> so Ezekiel, with everything that he built, they're going to take from him. Some random trucker calls in, hey, I found the three girls who are already on the evening paper... Mm-hmm. The bugle works fast. Yeah. Yes. And then he has ties into the police network to find out where they are. Call it off as those aren't the three girls that we're looking for. It's totally fine. Mm-hmm. And then we have we get to the finally the first scene of apparently he's able to dodge bullets of cops firing at him point blank range, but a vehicle is way too hard for him because he gets hit by a car so many times. It's so great. <laughs> All right, before we move forward on that, because. There's a, another time he's hit by a car, and that was fan fucking tastic. I was in the theater going woo at that one. <laughs> I don't so, understand the logistics of that one, but yeah, uh, you, me you neither. Would, you but would, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. So I do actually have a a kind of serious like complaint about Ezekiel. Okay. Um, and this kind of leads into like I don't know. This is like legit kind of upsetting to me, but the fact that. They have him wearing a Spider-Man costume Mm -hmm. completely legitimizes and devalues Peter Parker's Spider-Man costume. Oh, yeah. The fact that he designed it himself and he kind of like based it on him himself, what he envisions, how he sees himself as a hero. That iconic costume, be it from the Tobey Maguire movies where he tries a bunch of different things and he finally bases it off of the red and blue spider that bit him, or be it any of the other, you know, incarnations of Peter Parker, both movies and comics. The the Spider-Man costume is unique and one of a kind, and he is the first Spider-Man, like... You know, I, yes, I'm sure getting nitpicky. Oh, there was a Spider Man in 1966 that blah blah blah. No, like Peter Parker is Spider Man, and then everyone who comes out after him is an homage or inspired by, or they are their own thing. But either way, Peter is like the one it all comes back to. So having him in this shitty Spider Man costume that looks like it's a terrible DLC unlock for Fortnite or something. <laughs> It does. Yeah. Um, 
like that just that just like genuinely like made me feel gross but not only that this is only 20 years in the past Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if this happened okay so if this happened wouldn't other people be like oh hey wait is this spider-man guy the same spider guy from 2003 but actually you just reminded me okay remember when all that shit happened and they're talking on the radio about how where the girl is, you know, we have to look for the girl in her mid thirties. And they're like, wait, they didn't see him, so they couldn't see him, even though he was annihilating things and he was in a fucking. Also, he was in his suit when he was inside <laughs> of the subway. When did he have the time to change out of a suit into spandex and jump out of the subway? Did he just get butt <laughs> naked on the subway and just like throw the spandex on and then jump out the window? Or does he like, is he really talented at getting dressed upside down? Like, yes. I'm so, okay. But they're like, so... <laughs> they can't see him. They can't see him. But then all of a sudden it's just like, well, when can they see them and when can't they see him? So So, (laughs) I'm so confused because clearly Ben could see him and Ben doesn't have any special powers or anything. People could see him when he was in the fucking like when he walked through the door at the 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 uh, what is it called the diner? Like who can see him? Who can't see him? What is going on with this? I I just have to say, because I I found it pretty a pretty clever response. Um, Our guy over at uh, Wednesday Toast, uh, Wednesday Poll. He said, wait a second, Peter Parker's uh, inspiration for his Spider-Man suit was from a guy who tried to kill his uncle's friend when he was younger. Yeah. <laughs> and, to which I, I replied with, uh, wasn't his inspiration the Peruvian spider people? So wouldn't <laughs> the spider people indirectly be the inspiration that only we, the audience, are aware of? Seems to be yeah. a perfect justification for Peter Parker's suit for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's it, too. It's like the Peruvian people wearing like that's literal bondage. That's like that's like actual oh, like bondage outfit. But just to make it look like the webs of a spider. I'm just saying. Yeah. OK, so let's quickly go through the rest of this not movie. They're at the diner. He does it. She hits him with the car, puts the girls back in there. And then what does she decide to do with the girls? <laughs> She's like, I'm going to per- back to Peru because I read my mom's notes for the 95,000th time. No, no. She she pretend, she thinks about going to the diner, has a vision of the future, oh, yes. having a conversation with Ezekiel, then decides I'm going to be a surrogate mother to these children. But first uh-huh. I have to go to Peru. Oh, uh-huh. no. And I have to teach them CPR. <laughs> oh, yeah, because we have to foreshadow that I'm going to die and I need CPR. Because this is not going to come back any time in the movie. Right. OK, so the CPR, the CPR moment that she's teaching them. And I apologize to anyone listening. This yes. is this is a clusterfuck of a conversation around a clusterfuck of a movie. She teaches him CPR because she gets touched by him. And he's like, hey, the longer he holds you, the more poison he gives you. So if I go to cardiac arrest, you guys need to bring me back. And she's like, but you got to do it as a team. So they start. She teaches him CPR and they have to switch off like doing CPR. And I get they don't want to show like the pillow that she's apparently put like a hoodie on. But the camera angle really looks like they're grinding the pillow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, okay, I'm I'm tired. And then switch to the next one. No. And, no. And I'm like, I don't like this. Oh, this golly. Is, I, I know Sydney Sweeney's like in her mid-20s and so is uh, the others. But I don't like this kind of weird panty, like, panty. Yeah. Let's like grind on the pillow but not really show they're doing movement <laughs> and then she's and then she's like that's good girls keep going i'm like no no oh boy and then tries oh, to high, no and then tries to high five him they're like not now it's like you don't do an eiffel tower over cpr guy <laughs> oh my god no and then oh then she finally gets complimented by one of the, by one of them and says you're such a good teacher i'm like stop it no <laughs> no because she did not tell she only told them what the beats per minute is she didn't give them a frame of reference to know what that's supposed to be because they couldn't get the rights to stay in alive mm-hmm. i was gonna say yeah because that's always what they use they didn't even say like a beats per minute they're just like think of it like a heartbeat i'm like okay but if you're but- in panic <laughs> your your heartbeat is gonna match your own like that's not helpful 
Yeah, no, and I was like, why not stay in Alive? That's the one everybody always uses. Sony or, didn't well, want to put any more money into this movie than yeah, they had very to. Fair. Even referencing that song probably cost like $20,000. <laughs> yeah, right. But like, Sony, you probably own a song that has that same beat per minute. That's not an uncommon BPM for songs. No. Like, Seriously, on. they could have they could have gone back through their catalog and found a song yeah. from 2022 that had that rhythm. Mm-hmm. 20, wait, 2022? I, I, I'm giving them credit 2000. because one of, one of the things that bothered me about this movie is that they really tried to put in a background soundtrack to make oh, you so get an bad. endorphin high. They have mm-hmm. Breakfast at Tiffany's. They have Toxic by Britney Spears. They have uh, the song at the end. The end credit song is Dreams by the Cranberries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I love which that damn song. Bizarre oh, yeah. being there. They're using it as a punctuation to have you walk out of the oh. theater going, I like this song. Yeah, she sexually teaches them how to do give CPR, dumps them with Ben and then goes back to the Peruvian Amazon. My question is this, because they show this, that he's been looking that Ezekiel has had his hacker friend looking for them for forever. You know, this entire time, like, where are they? They couldn't have been hiding. Do they go to Jersey? They go here. I know post 9-11, there are cameras all over the airports and everywhere. They know what she looks like now. They identify her. He even said, that can't be Cassandra Webb. I killed her mother in the in the jungle. Did they not flag her as a possible terrorist kidnapping suspect from like the, the TSA? Right, or right, him? right. How does she have her passport to travel? I to was meet literally going to say, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn, she got her boosters and passport fast. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know they did it like in, in, in two hours or less, just like Walgreens photos. Exactly. <laughs> And to meet random guy in the jungle who's like, I knew you would return. I'm like, why isn't that guy her dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was his magical spider sperm that, that gave her her powers. They could have easily done a thing where it's a mom and dad adventure and he stays behind because he wants to learn the way of the spider people so he can teach Cassandra how to use her powers when she's ready. Listen, I listen, honey, you're dead right now, but I'm going to ask permission. Can I stay behind and just give her up to foster? Perfect. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> they could have swabbed it like that. They could have done. The, I mean, they already they already dropped the very stereotypical line of like, she will have a rough life, but it will exactly. be an inspiring one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and then I she goes back to the age of Ultron Thor pool and she forgives herself for hating her mom. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't understand. The, like I said, I was okay with Dakota Johnson's acting in this because the whole time it was just, I don't give a shit. I don't want to be here. Right. Yeah. Um, but the one moment of her, like, I, she, I don't see in any way she could have sold. This was like when she found out her mom was actually trying to find like the cure for her uh, disease before she was born. And she goes, you did it. You did it, mom. You did it. <laughs> and Stacy and I fucking did everything in our power not to bust out laughing because there were other people around us. But it was just like, you did it, mom. You did it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. this is so awkward. <laughs> it's so weird. Th- this is two thirds of like an an okay to fine movie. Like, this is not the worst movie I've ever seen. That's Electra. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. First two thirds are just they're fine but they're not great it's it's something and then the minute she gets to the jungle onward it is just absolute cringy trash they ex- they never explained that properly why she hated her mother because she has the pa- she has a paperwork she has stuff why does she hate her mother for getting shot <laughs> they, they, no they they do a decent enough job i think with that because she's pissed that her mom went to the peruvian amazon while she was like nine months pregnant pregnant. yeah do they not know doctors without borders do they not do they not know military people like there's plenty of people that i that i know and run into that that doesn't stop you feeling like well and that's the thing though is that she isn't somebody who's on duty to serve their country she's just a photographer scientist looking for a spider like it's not like this couldn't have been postponed she yeah. decided to go into the deep peruvian jungle where she could have gotten infectious diseases died <laughs> or gotten mauled by an animal while she was ready to pop i would be kind of pissed at my mom too if i knew she took that kind of risk but and to she know was that, trying to find you know, a cure for your illness that you were going to be born with yep. where you would oh, have it's mus- all better. muscular dystrophy for your entire life 
so yeah. that's another thing thing that I have the, that question then is nowhere in her mom's notes did she randomly note BT dubs I'm pregnant got to solve got to find the spider for my girl yeah, yeah that- like her diary she could have said like found out my child will be born with this like muscular such neurological um mm-hmm. uh, paralyzing you know uh disorder thing knew I shouldn't have gone bareback at Woodstock yeah, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the dad's that present he's lost to a bunch of hippies um uh yeah no it's it's there could have been anything any sort of thing. oh oh sorry i just remembered the other thing so you oh, know no. the whole picture that's in her thing of the, her mom and ezekiel and she goes oh, that's him who the fuck took that picture yes who took that she's picture? she's the photographer no no who, no okay who one, developed who took that, that picture photo? Yes, who took that photo, but also who took the photo of her taking the photo of the web? Yeah! Who took these photos? Who did this? We're breaking our brains thinking about this. Who? It's got to be the white it's got to be the the random guy who took her, who took her to the pool. He's invisible, so he's yeah. taking photos. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Makes sense. So so there's this meme going around the internet. This we're going to wrap up this conversation around this because I I don't even want to talk. There's we have to bitch about the ending. Okay. Can All you right, hold the meme on. until we bitch? <laughs> <laughs> the, well okay go go ahead because i i have one cut co- i have one comment about the ending okay. that i, I do okay. want to bring up but i'll let you guys talk say, about it and we'll get okay into so it. she gets back the girls aren't at ben's house anymore because uh Ma- mary's water breaks which by the way looks like a dog took a piss on the floor not like somebody's entire womb exploded with liquid and also why does ben need to bring them yeah why well, do they the, not stay yeah. in the house they're yeah they're 22, 25, and 26 years old. Why can't they not see that? <laughs> yeah. So she steals an ambulance, which I'm like, wait, she should know those people. They're her coworkers. Why the hell are you stealing an ambulance? You could just say, hey, guys, can you drive me down to the hospital? Well, that's because in my favorite part of the movie, she's not driving to the hospital to meet up with them. She drives it through, a, I think, a parking garage or a yep. building. A parking garage billboard. Through- a fucking billboard and just slams into Ezekiel. And I was in the theater going, yeah, <laughs> this was the because stupid she's, I wanted. She, uh, she has down mastered her powers because she has forgiven her mother. Yes. For trying to save her life. Yes. You will believe an ambulance can fly. That's what I wrote. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was the best. And then uh, the, okay. I will say though, uh, another part that I genuinely thought was like clever was when Ezekiel is chasing them in the ambulance and he's ho- car hopping and she's like, hey, grab the defibrillator uh, or the e- whatever the proper yeah, the, term is. Yeah, AED, defi- it's AED, a defibrillator. thank you, thank you. Uh, she's like, grab that up and charge it full charge. She's like, now nobody touch anything. Don't touch the walls. Don't And then say, do it. Shock the ceiling when I say go. And the fact that like she shocked it, it zapped him off. That was the only part of the movie I was like, okay, that was actually really clever that was cool yeah i wanted more of that more smarts because i gotta give credit where credit's due this was a superhero origin story that hit every single trope in the book and really isn't much different than the others but i liked how at least because this is a power uh, character who doesn't have superpowers it at least played more uh, along of she has to find a way out of situations rather than just brute forcing her way out of. But I wanted more intelligence, which is not what mm-hmm. we were going to get for this movie. But for, for anything produced by Sony. <laughs> yeah. He finds the girls because they get into the cab with Ben. Mm-hmm. Ben sees Spider-Man and then knows he's going to die in 15 years. <laughs> and and so she takes him to the abandoned warehouse. Okay, this is another problem. So this warehouse is when she first really discovered, because earlier in the movie, she really discovered that I think Henry, his name or something like that, she kept seeing that he's going to die if he gets in the ambulance. And she tries to stop him from getting the ambulance and fails to. He gets in and drives. I I was like, if she hadn't talked to him, he wouldn't have been hit by the car. <laughs> right. But because right. she delayed him 20 seconds, he gets clipped by a car. But they go to the abandoned warehouse. I did like that she that they were kind of showing that she's able to see what's happening and tell them to make decisions. It yeah. did feel a Duck very, now. yeah, it mm-hmm. did feel like um, the edge of tomorrow beach storming scene. The yeah. Girls duck yeah. Uh, she got Captain America's shield briefly to block fireworks for a little while. But the 
part that doesn't work for me is that every time she has a flashback or a flash forward, she sees this Ezekiel be brutal and quick. He str- he just quickly grabs and strangles and snaps necks to kill the girls. But when he actually gets there to do something with the girls, he just kind of stands there and watches them dangling from pipe work. Uh-huh. And he doesn't have movement. He doesn't have agency. He has no interest in doing anything other than just kind of like, all right, I'm here. Cool. I finally made it here. I've been hit by a car a few times. Let me inch towards you while that S for suck dangles off of the building. <laughs> and you keep looking at the PepsiCo sign dangling. And I'm sorry. If I see somebody I'm trying to, not that I would, but if I see somebody I'm trying to <laughs> kill, repeatedly <laughs> glance to the right Alex, you're supposed to talk to me before you break <laughs> up anything about murder. What oh, are you I doing? Well, I said I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought we had, I thought if we just say allegedly, it's fine, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> if I see somebody, yeah, if I see someone glancing to the right repeatedly and like very slowly crawling away from me while looking expectedly up in the air, I'm going to glance to my left and see what they're looking at. Mm-hmm. Well, there's maybe she's just craving that nice, cool, crisp Pepsi. It is the Pepsi generation in early 2003. That is true. And then he oh. dies. And then she gets hit by a firecracker and apparently is blind and paralyzed. And that's the movie. <laughs> yeah, she gets hit in the face with a, a firecracker, a rogue firecracker from this firecracker warehouse that is also home to PepsiCo or something. And the so, firecracker to the face paralyzes her as well. Well, I... Uh, that that was my question. Is like I understand that that uh, the firework goes past her face. It literally burns her fucking eyeballs. That I got. But when did she did she hit one of the sign? I was gonna ask you guys because I don't know if I, I, didn't see I it. missed it or not. But I don't think so. I that I think that could have been that could have been something they were trying to foreshadow. Or it was the same show, thing. But they don't before the subway scene when she's making popcorn corn in her apartment. And it's hot and she drops it. And then all of a sudden there's glass shattering before you actually see the glass shatter on the floor, which is hilarious. And I was like, where did the glass come from? Like, yeah, the who the hell grabs glass. the whole Because there tray. was no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And when you look back inside of it, the tray is in the microwave. But I don't remember seeing like a cup or a glass bowl. I literally don't know where that glass came from. I, I assumed it was like the tray from the microwave, but yeah. I, I it mean, wasn't, because that's what no I thought sense. it was too, and I checked, and it's not. That's where I'm even more confused, so yeah. I don't know. It's a bad I, movie with a bad premise. <laughs> I just don't know. And they had the audacity to sequel bait this, because she's now paralyzed. <laughs> she's wearing the Madam Web glasses that look terrible. Which, dear Lord, who... Uh, I don't advocate for people to lose their jobs very often, but the the screenwriter needs to like just get booted out of <laughs> Hollywood. They have written one okay movie, which was 2017 Power Rangers. They've also done Gods of Egypt and a bu- I think they're all oh, they God. also did Morbius. Yes. It's oh like, God. No, they they need to go. They need to be gone. But also the costume designer for this movie, they need to go. Because I don't um, know who sees those sunglasses that she's wearing when she's in the yeah. chair. And then the giant ass visor that she's wearing in her costume. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know who. I feel so bad for Dakota Johnson. The only costume that I thought was like fantastic was Julie Carpenter. Was a Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and fucking thank you for fucking like lying to me and Mm -hmm. gaslighting me movie all of the trailers (laughs) that showed the awesome battle sequences between the three fucking uh spider spider women women. slash slash spider girls literally being a dream he has and not being anything in the movie fuck you fuck (laughs) you no no they sequel bait you because they're in the the sanctum sanctorum which is all i can see with that window with, with the window and then Again, people cannot act like humans because she, because uh, Ca- Cassie says "bless you" before people sneeze. She knows what the food is before they've shown up, and then like, can you see our futures? And she flash forwards to them fighting crime, mm-hmm. and the most secret, like, yes, you will travel and b- defend things, and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, this is, I'm like, are they sequel baiting me right now? Are they? Is this how they're going to end with like? Her- her smiling imagining what she's building with them and they're and yes they get the power shot of the four of them in costumes on a web and all i could think of was dakota johnson's attempt at sincerity or 
joy or contentment, whatever she is trying to emote in that oh, final the scene. Hundred percent is so there because the director. I, I, I don't her, know. Okay, you're like, all seeing. Okay, I have two things to say about this movie before I'm done talking about it. One, <laughs> did anyone else roll their eyes so hard that they not only went into the back of your skull, but dropped down into your butthole? Like, it was that hard of an <laughs> eye roll? When they tried to do the forced, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. It's like, you will have great responsibility, and that will come with power. Something yep. like that. And I'm like, or, fucking Or they, hell. they did it with Ben, too, where he's like, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna love being an uncle. All the fun, none of the responsibility, because... You know, he says the thing later in life where he's telling Peter about responsibility. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Well, and then she's, but that's the thing is the way I heard that. I get it. But she's like, well, I'm not sure about that. She probably had a vision, not just of that, but of like, hey, guess what? Like his sister and, uh, or no, his brother and sister-in-law are going to die and he's going to have to take care of this nephew. Uh, But two, the other thing. Is anyone else really fucking tired of the trope of, like, the clairvoyant being emotionless and speaking monotone? Yes. They did that shit in Game of... Like, they've done it in a bunch of things. But, like, the most recent and egregious one that comes to mind was Game of Thrones. They did that with Bran. And it was the most obnoxious fucking thing in the world. Because I felt bad for that actor because he actually had a lot of personality. Until he... Until, like, seasons four onward, especially the later ones, where... I can see everything now... Like no, cool, it, you're not acting. No, it's I terrible. have the best story. Yeah. It it, it it's terrible. <laughs> Did you guys know about the the timeline restructuring that they did for this movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, this movie was originally being built to tie into the Tom Holland Spider-Man, which okay. is why yeah. it's set in 2003. Or no, I'm sorry. It was set to be tied into um the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, the Amazing oh, Spider-Man really? universe. Yeah, that was the original plan. Okay, but because sense. they said it in 2003, someone realized that doesn't work in the timeline because Andrew Garfield is 35 when they filmed those movies and Peter Parker is supposed to be graduating high school. So he's not graduating high school in 2011. Yeah. And so like, OK, well, let's do Tom Holland. But then that creates an issue where they have to get in touch with Kevin Feige and make sure that they can they're not voiding any or violating any contract negotiations right. by involving Tom Holland, which that makes more sense that Tom Holland is involved and i i would 100 percent bet that they plan on having a marissa tomei cameo as may in this movie but obviously because they didn't set it in the mcu they just made it its own thing they they didn't but to kind of get to my point about or that i mentioned earlier about uh may may not being there at peter's birth is bullshit is weird I, yeah. it, she she mm. would have she she will have known Peter all of his life still, but I don't think that someone un- unless the, the relationship is just that great. Someone that has recently just started seriously dating Ben Parker is going to take on Peter as their own son and have that relationship with him over the course of maybe two or three visits a year for 14, 15 years. Yeah, I guess I, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, I've teased this like three or four times now. There's a <laughs> meme going around which I don't know which one is the lie. It says all of these things happen in Madam Web, except one. Can you guess which one? Okay. So the list goes, Madam Web is born in a cave in Peru with the help of magical spider people. True. I think we can all agree that's a a true. The three spider women never get their powers and are only seen in costume during dream sequences. True. True. Evil Spider-Man is killed by a large Pepsi sign. True. (laughs) True. True. Which that one, people are already getting memory hold by this because they think they're that they saw him with get killed by a Coca-Cola sign. And I'm like, no, you see the S from the Pepsi like three times in her vision. The S kills them. There's no S in Coca-Cola. Yeah. But like people are already getting Berenstein Bears about this. Um, next one is Madam Webb becomes wanted for kidnapping by the NYPD. This is true. True. Right? Yeah, I I don't understand and I still don't understand how that happens so quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's three more. Madam Webb runs down evil Spider-Man in her car twice. Uh, the taxi and the ambulance, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Peter Parker is born but not named. True. Mm-hmm. Madam Webb inexplicably splits into three ghost-like copies of herself near the end of the movie. True. This That's is the good. only one where I think like it's technically a lie. Because they do explain it, it's just bullshit. 
No, that, I mean, I would still consider that a truth. I think this is a, I think this is a bait, a bait post because you're supposed to pick which one sounds the stupidest, but in reality, all of them are in the movie. Okay, I think that's that, the point of the post. Is it's it's a bait may, switch. Yeah. Okay. So like, hi, I got you. They're all true. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I, that makes more sense to me. I, I don't get this movie. <laughs> Sony needed to make a property to retain the Spider-Man rights. I won't lie. I would 100% watch this again. Don't give credit to IGN. IGN just posted a thing about what, like how IGN? this is destined to they just posted a thing about how this is destined to be like a slumber party movie or people just it's a such a bad movie that people watch it for a good time. Uh okay, but with how fucking shitty the acting is for uh Ezekiel, yes, no, I will watch this again. I will watch it again with my <laughs> friends. I will be the only person who buys this on Blu-ray DVD 4K combo. No, <laughs> Alex, your face! <laughs> Get the steel book. <laughs> Steelbook Collector's Edition, one out of one printing. It only cost me no. $20. <laughs> you know, in about in about 15 Alex months have a heart attack. that Sony is going to try their damnedest to make this number one on Netflix for all those articles yeah. about a, you know, an MCU movie that bombed is now number one on Netflix. But did we all overlook it? And it's like, mm. mm-hmm. And then they'll yeah. re-release it in theaters just in time for Craven. We're getting three of these this year. This is this is our first course. We've we've got Craven, and then we've got the main course with whatever the hell Venom 3 is yeah. going to be. Okay. I'm done. All right. Well, I, I did kind of want to talk about the Fantastic <laughs> Four casting real quick. Um, yeah. We, we did get Pedro Pascal officially confirmed as Reed Richards, which that's been like the worst kept secret for like three months. Uh, Vanessa Kirby has been a, a fan cast suggestion for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Joseph Quinn from Stranger Things and even Moss uh, Backrack, Back, mm-hmm. Bachrack, Bachrack, who a lot of people would know him from The Bear as Cousin. And I think this is a very solid cast. It, they oh, yeah. pretty much confirmed that the movie is going to be set in the 1960s. There's actually a really good new video from Owen Likes Comics, a YouTuber that I really enjoy, uh, who talks about uh, Chris Columbus's failed attempt to make a a Fantastic Four movie in the 1990s, which eventually became that cult classic, really bad Mm -hmm. one. Um, But it sounds like they're taking a lot of elements from that Chris Columbus story and putting it in here. Uh, Mm -hmm. So if you want to get a little bit of an idea of what that movie could look like, definitely check out Owen Likes Comics' most recent Fantastic Four movie uh, video. I, I don't have a whole lot to say. Vanessa Kirby is very pretty. The only thing I can think about her currently is that really bad scene in I I shouldn't shouldn't say bad in that, that really stupid logic gap scene in Mission Impossible seven where uh, Haley Atwell is pretending to be Vanessa Kirby's character, but they forgot to give her contacts or the, yeah. the movie is trying to tell us like this is this is Haley Atwell's character because look at her big brown eyes. Whereas Vanessa Kirby has like the most huge, beautiful blue eyes you've ever seen. And no one notices the difference. Yeah. Right. Like I have no complaints on this, these castings. I don't know much about Joseph Quinn since I don't watch stranger things. Yeah. I know some people are complaining that Pedro Pascal is overcast in things, but like, I like him. I, I, yeah, it's hard to be upset about space daddy. Mm. I, I like Pedro Pascal. I just, Marvel to me has shifted away from the first and you know second arcs where they cast unknowns and yeah problem yeah. and like people who were problematic. Let's admit it, Robert Downey Jr. when he oh. was cast as Iron Man was problematic. It, it was, was a risk. It was a huge risk and liability to the company. It, oh it's, yeah, it's a well known story that their insurance writer was w- almost killed their budget because of casting him. Because mm-hmm. they didn't think, because the insurance people didn't think that he was going to finish the film. Yeah. But it just seems such obvious, you know, that Pedro Pascal, he's everyone's daddy right now. Let's put him, Vanessa Kirby is hot. She's been in a bunch of stuff. I mean, hot as in her career, but she's an attractive person. She's a good actress, but I'm saying her career, she's really hot. Oh, the person fresh off the bear. Oh, the Stranger Things kid that everyone's talking about. Eddie Munster playing the guitar in the under, in the, you know, the upside down. Yeah, put him in it. I literally don't know any of these actors except for Pedro Pascal. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I don't. Yeah, they're they're all on career hot streaks right now, and so to me, it seems very obvious and unsurprising, which is the part that bothers me. Now, what may work it, for me is that if it is set in the '60s, 
and they do like an origin story to set up how John Krasinski ends up being <laughs> like he ends up uh-huh. being the son, you know? Uh, they've confirmed it's not going to be an origin story. They're already going to have their powers by the time the movie starts. Mm. Um, they have confirmed Herbie the robot will be a character in this movie, which I am all for. I Herbie needs Herbie justice. The love bug. <laughs> <laughs> Herbie's an acronym. Um, and they have also confirmed Dr. Doom is going to be in this movie, which I'm kind of eh on that one. Like he's been, I get so that Dr. Doom is like the fantastic four villain, but you can do something else. And I, Alex, I talked to you a little bit about it. I want this to be more of an adventure film yeah. than I want it to be a superhero film because the fantastic four at their core are explorers. They dive into the multiverse. They dive into the quantum realm. They dive into any kind of, alternate reality and they have adventures and they get sucked into some nonsense that happens over there. I don't want it to end up being a punch up or uh, an invasion of Latveria with Dr. Doom. Right. We'll see what, what comes of it. I just, I feel like there's more room to work with and it's a little disappointing that they're just going to go back to Dr. Doom because I have to set up Dr. Doom because it's the fantastic four. I have, a mild hope that if they do set in the sixties that we'll able to, we're, we'll be able to see unit or whatever the heck it is that Haley Atwell works for that. We'll see her in like, you know, her forties or fifties that we'll see a young, uh, that we'll see Howard Stark because he's still alive and kicking around then that we can see, um, de Michael Douglas. Cause they haven't really done a whole lot of de-aging him. And he, he's the older actor that needed de next. I mean, you know, they got all that going on. I, Maybe if they bring in Lawrence Fishburne's character as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Ben Foster. Uh, yeah, wasn't Goliath. Ben Foster? It was Goliath. Or not Ben Foster. Was it Ben Foster? There's a Ben Foster actor, but is is Goliath from the comics also Ben Foster? Um, you know, uh, Doctor Foster. It could be really fun. I'm I'm interested to see if they do that, but I mean, I, I don't know what they're going to do with it by setting it so far in the past. That's that's my problem. Bill Foster. Bill Foster. Okay, yeah. that was close. So Ben uh, Foster is the actor who p- portrayed Angel in X Men Three: The Bad X Men. God, would it be hysterical if he was in Deadpool? the one that started all the bad X Men? <laughs> we had First Class. That was okay. Yeah, but then everything else again was it, it's a roller coaster. Like X Men Two, really good. X Men Three, really bad. X Men First Class, really good. Really bad. Everything else afterward <laughs> until Deadpool. Yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful that they're going to go do something good with it. Marvel needs to maybe do some one shots and some fun, but if they, if it ends up with them going to a wormhole and they pop out in modern day, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Beppo say something fun. Something, something. Supposed, no, something fun. Something fun. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I do want to make a public apology. I, I put it out on Twitter, but I need to, I, I want to put it on the pod as well. I need to apologize to Slade slash Archibald. When we did the uh, waifu challenge, I talked about how thirsty a lot of weebs are. And yes. with the you debut bang. of the X-Men 97 <laughs> trailer, I forgot how thirsty comic book nerds are for Rogue. Oh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Um, I have to apologize to Slade because comic book nerds are just as bad. And I forget that from time to time be, being in my little bubble where I'm like showing all my kids like, oh, this is a cute story. Look at Singularity. She's adorable and in a force. Look at these badass women. And I've, I'm just like conversing with the people on the podcast. So like I, I, I don't dive into that that bubble very often, but like. Alex and I both shared the X-Men 97 trailer mm-hmm. and the, the Twitter algorithm went, Oh, X-Men 97, you're thirsty for rogue, right? Here's a shit ton of thirst. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, Slade, I'm sorry for giving you shit about that. Um, X-Men nerds are just as bad. Apology forgiven, forgiven. forgiven. And, and let it be known that there is an entire generation of women who find the Creole accent attractive because of Gambit from the anime X Men the oh, anime fuck series? Gambit. <laughs> yep. Yes, no, no, you can say fuck Gambit you want, but there's a lot of women who, if you say, yeah, you know, you're, like you're sugar, not wrong, but Gambit, Gambit sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm n- I'm not sorry. Gambit, like what you like, but Gambit sucks. Oh man, I hope Deadpool three has a cameo with a uh, what is it? Uh, what's his name? Gambit when he tried to get that Gambit film off and failed to the John Magic Carter Mike of guy. Mars. The no, the Magic Mike guy. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh no! Good. No. Wow. So Never? both Magic Mike and John Carter of Mars are mm-hmm. were were trying to be Gambit. That's interesting. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I'm sleepy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, I had a gin and tonic earlier, so I'm 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 doing pretty good. But yeah, I'm getting Sipping a little gin and a little tired. Juice. Laid back with my mind and my money and my money on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Beppo, thank you so much for for taking the time to be here and putting your friendship with Stacy at risk. I know. I know. Well, I might have lost uh, my best friend, but at Aww. least I got to see Madam Webb. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the best review Sony gets for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Alex, let people know about our discord. On our Discord, you can see Rogue's dad ass a lot from X Men the Animated <laughs> Series, mostly posted by Beppo. And then you you can also just chime in and let us know: Did you actually like this film? What did you find redeemable? And how nice looking are Sydney Sweeney's legs? <laughs> and don't forget, we are running our competi- or our sweepstakes drawing, whatever you want to call it, right now. Where if you send us uh, your email, text not text, uh, tweets, social media posts, whatever, um, with the hashtag Talking Smackdowns will enter you in for a chance to win a copy of Marvel Midnight Suns on Steam. You can email us at TalkingSmackPod. You can find, or no, I'm sorry. You can email us at TSmackPod at gmail.com. You can find us on the social medias at Talking TalkingSmackPod, um, Blue Sky, Instagram, Threads, Hive Social, Post News, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Lonnie's website. Hey, Beppo, thank you so much for our original avatars. Yeah, not a problem. And thank you to Retro L Studios for our Ricky avatar. Please like, subscribe, rate, review on your podcatcher of choice. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to this nonsense. <laughs> I bet it's a better use of your time than uh, Madam Web, or at least you're th- hoping it is. I uh, leave a review. Let us know was this a better time than Madam Web? Just let let that be your review. Uh, but again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and take care. And remember. With great responsibility comes power. Hmm. Were you going to say great responsibility? <laughs> Ron Swansibility. <laughs> All right, Beppo, we need your uh, waifu tier list for Madam Web. Top to bottom, go. Oh my God. Well, let me tell you right now. It's a uh... rage. <laughs> <laughs>